It is Thursday. I have been knocking out these lives this week. I'm so excited to do this interview because it is a Chicago native. And you know what, y'all? We need to make sure that we support our Chicago people when they're out doing it and doing it big. Um, but I'm waiting for, you know, things to kind of so you guys can see, you know, get the notification that I'm, I'm live and and, and we could get into it. Um, I'm about to send him a request. Would love to know how y'all are doing today. Um, how are you doing this Thursday? I have to think like what day of the week it is because it's just been, I've been doing so much. Um, all right, let me try to get my guest on while I try to get him on here. Um, like I said, I would love to know how you guys have been hanging in this week. Uh, let me see where I can find him. There it is. Okay, just sent him an invite. I'm not going to reveal just yet because I want to give him a warm introduction, but I'm pretty sure you guys already know. If you looked at my timeline, you saw what's up. You know what's happening. You know why you're here today. Um, we're going to do a, a quick 20 minutes to have a little conversation and get to know someone in Chicago that is doing it big. Um, they've been killing it on the scene here in Chicago. No, I'm not talking about Kanye, you know, that's a whole nother conversation for a whole, whole nother day. But um, this person's even better than Kanye, I feel, um, because they are just so talented. It's just wild how talented he is. And Kanye, you know, he, uh, he, he, he has his talent in the music, but this person's a, a talent, multifacets to it. So I'm trying to, there he is. I didn't even there we go. a warm introduction. Hold on, let, 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 let's do this all over. So, um, can you see me? Can you see me? Hold on, let me get. You, you see look me? perfect. I can see that, you, you look perfect. So let me do a let me, better on, introduction. Make sure you see that. Make sure you see. Make sure you see that in the back, real quick. You feel me? I, real, I real quick. That. You feel me? Cover that up. Hey, that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, how you also, doing? Let's get it. Yeah, are you in your dressing room right now? <laughs> no, nah, this is like my own little ambiance, like a little area in my in my apartment. Oh, you're fine. Yeah. Okay, I feel you. So, I, if y'all don't know. He's an actor. He's a singer and is known for his acclaimed role as Reg Taylor uh, in Showtime's drama series, The Shy. Please give a warm welcome, and I want to see some hearts for Chicago native Barton Fitzpatrick, if I'm saying that right. Am I saying that right? Barton. 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 Excuse me. Yeah. Barton. Let's get it right. Barton Fitzpatrick. Thank you so much Absolutely. for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, welcome. First of all, I, I want to give, I was just giving you big ups because you're a Chicago native. I'm here, you know, in Chicago. And I absolutely am just from one Chicago into another. So proud of you. Every Chicago show, Chicago, I mean, I feel like you've been on them all. Med, Fire, PD, The Shy, you know, Empire. Um, Talk to me about how you got your start in acting. I kind of know the story, but I would love for you to tell people. Absolutely. How I got my start in acting. It yeah. came from an inspiration. It came from an inspiration from the Tate family, Lamar Tate and Lorenz Tate. Their fathers and my father were best friends. They grew up. So I'm really from the West Side. Don't nobody know that. I don't be trying to claim that too much, but I'm really from the West Side and my family Grew up with the Tate's family. So, of course, growing up, that was my cousin. Seeing him on screen, seeing Lamar on screen, I knew it was possible. I knew, it, you know, I could obtain it. I started writing letters to Oprah at the age of nine years old. I've been wanting to do this my entire life. But you asked, you asked how I got my start. Senior year in high school, to all those seniors out there, take drama. I took, I took an elective. I took drama class. And what was introduced was called the August Wilson Monologue Competition. And um, if you don't know who August Wilson is, he's one of the greatest playwrights of all time, black playwrights of all time. You probably saw Fences with um, Viola Davis and Denzel Washington. That was actually the first play that I had ever read. And I used that same character for my monologue. The preliminary round, got a scholarship to the University of Illinois at Chicago for theater and acting. 
and was there for a little little bit of time, bored, you know, no one like sitting around like, I think, I, I think I'm ready to work right now. And that's exactly what happened. I love got an agent. And like you said, the list goes on, down. Everything in Chicago, I was able to burn up that wave. You know, shout out to the Chicago casting directors, Marissa Ross and Chris Carch, because they um, pretty much have cast me for my entire resume. You know, oh, but, that's awesome. um, that's is, is now, going into your start, so you, because I interviewed Lorenz and Lamar Tate. Um, so y'all are like play cousins or I mean, well, it's no such thing as a play cousin in in Chicago. You know that. That's you know, true. It's like... <laughs> it's true. Everybody I mean, it's really just no such thing as a play cousin. Yes, those are we're cousins, yes. yes. But I mean, yes, I mean, you know how it is. If you got a best friend, your sister, you've been your best friend, sister, your your children and her children, you know, they'll be cousins. That's just how that is. So That's you know just, it's, it's it. A lot of people get it confused thinking I'm just trying to like claim the Tate family and nothing like that. No, nah, like, no, we, we talk on a regular. Like, you know, uh, he actually, Lorenz was the first person I called when I booked Power, you know. So, mm. so yeah. you did when you, because uh, I know he was in, in, in Power there, Rich. So, have you guys had an opportunity to work alongside each other? We have actually, um, um, not on the screen, but, um, he he and uh, Lawrence Fishburne they developed an audio series called Yes, Brothers that's Hill. what. I, yes, that's what I inter I, I interviewed them for that. That was yes. such a great series. Absolutely. Well, I I they I guest starred season two of Bronzeville. I think I did five or six episodes. Big world, you know. So that was the first time Lorenz and I got to work with each other. We were in every scene together. I was like his like his you know. Little right hand man who like he you know showing the ropes to getting his feet wet into the the little organization of crime that we had going on in the thirties. You know the show was set in the thirties of Bronzeville, so you know. Yes, yes. But I, a lot I, of I, a lot of Chicago actors, Wood Harris, like you know Corey Hardrick. It was a lot of us on that show. Like, but yeah, that's the first time Lorenz and I and Lamar were able to work with each other. That is awesome. So I, I want to talk about you and the characters that you choose because. Reg in the shy. I'm, 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 I'm not gonna lie to you. He gave me anxiety. He was just a ball of uh, like mess, and I'm just like, you're stressing me. So a lot of these characters, though, that I notice are kind of like in the bad boy sector, uh, kind of up to some. Um, now I will say which we'll mm -hmm. talk about and we'll get into, you know, you are going to be doing this role playing a serial killer, but still in the bad. So do you worry about being <sighs> in this bad boy sector and like not being able to really show that you can maybe do, I mean, you do show emotion in these, these, these characters because there's a whole Absolutely. different layer of emotion, but Absolutely. you know what I'm trying to say, right? Absolutely. Um, well, you know, like I said, I, I, I come from a theater background, so, you know, character characterization and just focusing on the character itself, developing the character, that's very important to me. Um, the thing with um, with Reg, with the character Reg, he was only supposed to be in the very first episode. Reg was written as just literally a day player, 10 lines, one and done. So they fell in love with me and they continued to bring me back, but the writers and producers for season one, shout out Elwood Reed and Adam Glass, um, RP David Rodriguez, they brought me back and said, you do what you want to do. So as it, you know, people don't understand this, when you begin to improv and you begin to like bring the authenticity that they wanted and that they allowed me to do, I'm a writer. That's me writing. That's me producing and writing. That's what people are not aware of. You know what I mean? So it's just like, as far as moving beyond that, you don't want to get bottled up into these gangbanging roles. I have a theater background. I'm trained. I'm I'm raw. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, well, right. I'm really raw. You feel me? Right. So it's like, I can do roles like that in my sleep. So as far as the serial killer role, that's something where it's like, you got to dig a little deeper. Anybody can yell and tote a gun and shoot up some stuff. But as far as like, you'll really be scared after you see me in this role. Like, that was just on some like, yeah, he probably one of them thugs on the street, I wouldn't want to approach him. But when you see this next role, it'll be like, you know what? 
um, you might need some medication or some professional help. Like, you know, it's, it's just a total different character. So it's still dark, but it's a different character. You know what yeah. I mean? Right. Shout out Mark Harris. Mark Harris, um, Chicago up, up and coming, Chicago native filmmaker. He cast me in White People Money, called me alongside Drew Sedora. That was my first time doing comedy, you know? My family finds it to be fascinating for me to portray such dark characters because I am a big goofball. All I do is crack jokes 24-7. You know, I really do. So, That's okay. Somebody was calling you. Yeah, people know, like, look, it's live. You, you know, when you're doing live productions, things happen. You know, you know that technology, but yeah, go ahead. So go ahead. So sorry. So sorry for that. Somebody was calling me. No, that's okay. Um, that was that's my fine. manager calling me. Hopefully it was with a job, but, uh, <laughs> Hey, get that schmuck. <laughs> but, uh, um, so anyways, like I was saying, um, I'm sorry. What was the question? No, we were talking about you, you know, just having the, you, you, you you're a goat. You, you do it all. Oh, you know, you have a creator background and with this new role being a serial killer, you're bringing some absolutely. edge to it. And I love that for you. So that project doesn't release um, until it's, wait, wait, let me make sure I got it right. It's Wayward. And that's releasing this summer and you're acting alongside uh, Darius McCray. But let's- Darius McCrary. McCary, sorry, McCary. Let's go back to uh, Power Book. Uh, which you were just in. That was a 10 episode drama set here in Chicago, um, the third installment to the Power Universe. So you play Blackston, if I'm saying that right? Absolutely. All right. So I know you were working alongside Joseph Sakura, who's also a Chicago native. We just killing it in Chicago. We killing it. I, I, yeah. I feel, do you feel that Chicago artists are a little <sighs> under looked or is that a word am I saying this right? I feel overlooked. Like overlooked. Overlooked. Overlooked, underappreciated because there is Absolutely. some raw top talent that has come from here. Myself. You know, myself. You got people like myself. Like I, yes. the, what I loved about the Kanye West documentary is a portion mm -hmm. where he, he and, and uh, I think Common where they talk about how they had to leave Chicago to make it. Yes. I can proudly say I never have to go anywhere and I can walk down the street and people are going to ask for my pictures. They're going to tell me how much they appreciate my work. You know, I, and I still live in Chicago. I never left. I never, never had to go anywhere. Like actually going off to L.A. showed me how famous I was moving and traveling around. It showed me how lit I was. And I'm like, oh, that, that all came from Chicago. But Stars, Showtime, Fox. These, these networks are taking a chance on our city. So it had to start there first. You know, it had to start with them putting productions and filming locations here in the, in the city for local actors like myself to have those opportunities, you know. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, for a while, of course, we were overlooked. Lorenz Tate had to move to, to, to Los Angeles, you know. Who's to say he would have never made it, but back in those times, it wasn't nobody coming to Chicago filming nothing, you know. Like yeah. nothing at all, but now you got Chicago PD, you got you got Empire, you got, you got you got power, you got all, and these are hit shows too. So it, Hollywood just needed to to take a chance on us first, on the city itself, and then slowly but surely, they're going to start taking more and more chances on actors like myself because it's we we some of the baddest actors. I started off on the stage. That's some of the best acting you're going to see on on theater. Like ain't nobody touching us when it comes to theater, in my opinion. You know, I just seen some Broadway shows. We didn't been around, but I mean, yeah, it's like in the next five to ten years, when it's more film studios here, you'll have a th you'll have thousands and millions of actors. Never, they're not gonna be going to L.A. no more, New York. They're gonna be flying to Chicago, you know, yeah. and that's coming. That's what's going. I heard that that on the Power Book, uh, they they picked you. They made this role for you. That's how dope you are. They yes. Well, well, we ain't gonna say they. We we gonna be we we gonna be specific because you know I like okay. to pay homage. We ain't gonna say they. You feel me? So the creator of the show, who's also a Chicago native, the creator. If you read the credits, it's gonna say created by Robert Munich. Robert Munich, who's also the showrunner of the show, he had me audition for about five different characters. Mm. Um. So my best friend Christy Lofton, who booked Jannard, 
you know, we've always had a friendly competition. He beat he beat me up with Jannard. Boom. I don't want to see nobody else other than my friend book that. Congratulations. But anyways, it was other characters on the show. So you saw who Jeremiah's character portrayed, Elijah, audition for Elijah, Detective Seamus, different, you know, and it'll be like, why did they keep wasting my time? But the whole time what he was doing was showing the network, y'all see these different characters that he can do? I'm just having him audition to show y'all how bad he is. So when it come down to me deciding I'm going to write a specific character for this actor, I don't want no problems. I don't want no problems, no no drawback. And, it, and, it, and it'll still be like, oh, well, you know, maybe we should see some other actors. No, Barton Fitzpatrick is Blackston, period, point blank, period. So I can proudly say, can't no other actor in the world say, I audition for that character. If you did, come holler at me because you're lying. But, you know, it's just all love, though. So I, that that's all homage and love and respect to Robert Munich for doing that. He saw how much of a relationship me and Chris D. Lofton had. He was already a fan from my work on The Shy. He figured out a way to get me on the show. And these last four episodes, here we go. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I do know that because I'm running out of time here. Um, but I know that you have a couple of projects that you are working on, one of them that you actually produced. So Absolutely. Um, let's talk about those. One of them uh, is a new series called Bloodline starring you and Ving Rain. So talk a little bit about that. Okay, so Bloodline, created by Manny Haley, if you've seen any of the, the Truth to the Game trilogies, those films, you know. He's a music mogul who decided to do um, television and film. Um, it's called Bloodline. It's basically like a black version of The Godfather. I play a character named V, who's an orphan. And, you know, present day, you know, I'm like the leader. I'm not going to say I'm just the leader of a gang. I'm, a, I'm a, a boss. You know, this is a... So it's just like, it ain't the typical gang banger on the street. It's like, I'm a boss guy, and I'm, I've been in war with a, a specific family. And Ving Rhames is the head of that family. So that's pretty much what the show is about. Um, and then, you know, throughout my journey of being in foster care, finding out who my actual parents are, it reveals that I'm actually in the Simmons family. So I've been at war with my own family this whole time. So that's going to be hot and spicy. Ving Rhames, <laughs> Lisa Ray, Clifton Powell, myself, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's more, it's a lot of us, a lot of familiar faces you'll see in that show. And, and then we already I, I have to say, about I, just, I know you, I know we, um, I just wanted to say, shout out Manny Haley again. He is paying for all of this out of his own pocket. There's no network or studio involved. This is one, a black man paying for all of this. I've gotten paid more than I've ever worked in my life from Manny Haley on this show, and it'll be more than worth it. So, Bloodline, please stay tuned for that. Absolutely. Okay. And then um, Wayward, which we talked about, which is a ser uh, thr thriller that's releasing this summer, and you're playing mm -hmm. a serial killer. And then you produce, and you're acting, and everything is both. And that's a thriller, starting you and Jason Mitchell. So acting and, and producing, you getting in the producer credits, you are doing, yes! Absolutely, that. absolutely. So Talk about that and, and working with Jason Mitchell again, because you guys used to work together on The Shot. My brother, absolutely. Co-star from The mm -hmm. Shot, you know, Brandon and Reg, reunited again. For the fans, they'll love to see that. But he called me up. He had been reaching out for a while, like, bro, we got to do our own stuff. We got to do our own stuff. And I'm like, bro, whatever you need, I got you. He was like, I just connected with uh, an award-winning writer, Jaquavis Coleman, you know, billboard seller. Um, and he said, I have this script, and we want you to just come do it. So I just, I'm like, of course, bro, whatever you need, I just show it up and I just put it down, start acting. And then it'll be certain things where it's just like, you know, my, you know, my experience on set. And I'd be like, you know, I think we should get a shot of this. Maybe we should bring the camera in right here. Maybe we should rewrite this last episode, this last scene to the point where Jaquave has brought me to the side and said, hey, um, hey look, bro, you just co-produced this whole movie. Um, let me throw away your credit. I'm throwing away your contract, and you you co-produced this whole movie. So that's just something that fell in my, fell into my lap. So thank you, Jason Mitchell, for giving me the call. Jaquavis Coleman, you know, Stack Moses, who directed it. But yeah, everything is both another thriller. Uh, if y'all liked um, if y'all liked uh, what's the name of the movie? Uh, what um, the black <laughs> version of the Bonnie and Clyde? What what is it called? The, what? Is, uh, can oh, you think of the name Queen of the movie? and Slim. Yeah, if y'all like Queen and Slim, watch everything as well. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah. If y'all okay. like Queen and Slim, watch everything as well. Okay, and I don't want to forget about 
you singing. Okay, that is what's really, I'm like, get out of town. So where did your, oh, I hate that. I only have a few I minutes. Mean, see, but, I got the studio right. I got the mic. You know, I got the whole love. Uh, so if it's any, but not what were you saying? <laughs> What was, when did you realize that, you know, you had a voice and, and, and singing was it for you? My whole entire life, to be honest, my mother was, a, um, you know, back in her days, my mother had me after 40. So, you know, she's born in the 50s. So, you know, back in the 60s, early 70s, she was a well-known blues singer in Chicago. You know, actually was supposed to go on tour with Michael Jackson. That's a whole nother story. So it's just like my sister. Uh, Mercy, who's at, she's actually going to be on my next single ca called Deja Vu. We're about to release that. She, I've right. been around singing my whole life. Everyone, everyone can sing around me. Like you know, it's all love. So I've always been inspired to want to sing. And then one day, I just you know, you just catch yourself, and or someone else will catch you. And yeah, once some somebody you know verifies it, the confidence will never leave. But I always knew I could sing. I just wanted to wait to have a name for myself before I began releasing music. And I'm grateful and blessed that the fans have been able to embrace me as an artist as well as an actor. Because, you know, it's always, uh, here go this other actor trying to do some music. But no, I have a real r and I'm coming for every last one of y'all, literally. <laughs> all, the Pied Piper, the Prince, the, all of that. I'm coming for all of y'all. I'm just letting y'all know because I have real r and Not the Pied Piper, though. <laughs> He's locked up. Ain't I'm he? coming from uh, the General Tank. I'm coming for all of y'all. Period. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so when yeah. when is Deja Vu being released? In a couple weeks, right? In a few weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Deja Vu. Um, yes, promote um, that, please, because you know you you need the the support. You want people to vu. support that. So. Deja Vu. Absolutely. Deja Vu, produced by Icon written by myself and my sister and a guy named Daniel Vreeland. Uh, shout out Daniel Vreeland. He's one of the hottest country singers in the world right now. I, I can't leave him out of the story, too, as far as music. I ended up meeting a guy named Daniel Vreeland, who's now literally one of the hottest country artists in the world. And he helped me develop my sound into an R&B artist. He helped me to, you know, show me the proper advocacy in the studio, in the booth, and how to really just push forward. So now he's he doing his thing, and I appreciate him for that. And now it's time for us to go on here and release some records because, you know, you should go on my Instagram page. It's called Silent Treatment. I, I make people have to go to the page just to watch that, you know, just to watch that video. That's how song. That's how good they said the song was. But Deja Vu is coming. Myself and Mercy. Shout out Private Stock, which is the management team. My lovely publicist. Thank you so much for having me. Like, this is an amazing. No, thank, thank, <laughs> thank you. I hope that we can do it again and in person. Um, I, I always have time to speak to my, you know, Chicago natives. I, I, I just, you know, with COVID and everything that went on, we didn't get to do in person because we booked this weeks ago. But let's continue to do this because I feel, Absolutely. and I don't know about you, that a lot of times we as Chicago creatives and in the industry, we're like all isolated in our own little bubble. And I feel like working together can really, I feel like New York and LA got that shit unlocked, but we need to do it a little bit. And better. Dallas. And Dallas. Yeah. yeah. I, I, feel like I literally just was talking about, yeah, um, Hollywood Bay Bay, DJ Chaotic. I was talking to them about how I can unify Chicago. And it's something that's called the hub that they do. We should be able to have every artist in Chicago come together and support each other. That we and should be not, able to do that. It doesn't have to just be actors or musicians. It could be people. No, no, like no, no, me. no. Yeah. On all any level, if you are doing something positive for the city, we should all get together. We should all know each other. It should be one family. Everybody in Hollywood knows everybody, you know? And it's yes. the same way in Chicago. Everybody in Chicago know everybody, but everybody in Chicago doesn't support everybody in Chicago. So that's what we have to do better at. That's what it yes. is. So no, yes. whoever listening, you have my support. If you want to do something with me, you know, let's tap in. Let's make some art. Let's make some magic. We are just getting started. I love each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. I'll see y'all in the comments. Don't think we ain't looking at y'all. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Don't think we ain't <laughs> we looking. looking. We're looking, but, but um, yes, let's, but let's try. Anytime, any, anytime you need me, you know what I'm saying? I would love to do it in person, you know, but um, anytime. Yes, absolutely. It was great talking to you, Barton. I got that, Barton. Yes. Barton. 
<laughs> so let's do this again and um good luck with everything we'll be looking out for your new films and se series and new music hitting in a couple of weeks so good luck thank you so much you got so my support much. all right all right absolutely and you have mine all right thank you bye bye y'all bye y'all <laughs>